there. My name is Kelly Dale with Off the Beaded Path. If you're new here or this is your first time watching, I have a bead store in Forest City, North Carolina called Off the Beaded Path. I've got a website called offthebeadedpathbeadstore.com and I've been here on YouTube for about 11 years. Today, I'm going to teach you something that honestly, I hoped I would never have to do a video on. It is a three-dimensional beaded star. Now, I'm going to teach you the very, very basic design and how-to of a three-dimensional star. They are not my passion, and I know that some people, like, that is their existence. They love to make these stars. But I posted, uh, I think it was last week or two weeks ago, the Museum of Beadwork is asking people to mail in stars, beaded stars, that they're going to hang in their entryway. And when I posted or reposted that, I should say, I got a lot of requests for Kelly, please show us how to make these stars. So... I'm going to show you the basic design. Now, the design that I'm going to be showing you today is the uh, one of the original designs by Diane Fitzgerald. There are two pioneers, mainly, of beaded stars, and that is Jean Powers and Diane Fitzgerald. So, back in 2013, Diane came out with this book here, Shaped Beadwork and Beyond, and you can see she has a beautiful large star here on the center. Um, if you go to page 39, 39, if you have the book, she has step-by-step -step instructions for a five-pointed star. And so I'm going to be teaching you exactly by Diane's instructions because, again, she is one of the pioneers of the beaded star. These are amazing instructions. I'm going to put a lot of links, or have Sammy, <laughs> put a lot of links under the video here. Uh, in the description of some other really, really great patterns for these beaded stars. Jean Powers has a great pattern. Um, there's just a lot of really great patterns to teach you how to make the basic star. Once you know the basic star and how to put them together, the world is your oyster. You can really do whatever you want to with these stars. They're a lot of fun. So I'm going to be showing um, quite a few different things today than I normally would as far as some graphs that um, my wonderful friend, Franklin, uh, out in Texas. He is a star guru, and he was amazing enough to send me some graphs or some diagrams that I could show you guys on these beaded stars. Now, again, we are going to put a link to Franklin's site here below me because he does a lot of Zoom classes on these beaded stars, and now he has gone way beyond these little five-pointed stars and can make some amazing things. So, I'm going to be doing a lot of links down below, a lot of diagrams today to help you understand how to make this basic beaded star. The good thing is you can pretty much use any size bead that you want. It's going to make it either really small, if you use 15s, or really big, say if you use size 8s. Most people use size 11 Delica beads. Not all people, of course, but most use the size 11 Delica beads, and that's what I'm going to be using today. Now, as per Diane's instructions, I'm going to be using three colors. I'm going to be using a main, what I'm going to call a main color. That is all the places where you see this darker purple color in the star. So, it's going to be on the edging. It's going to be on the little um, pieces here that are coming out to make that kind of burst of the star. The next color I'm going to use is my filler, what I'm going to call my filler color. That's everywhere you see that pretty like matte purple lavender color. And then the third color I'm going to use is what we call the connection color. That connection color here is the gold. So you can see it runs straight up and down here through the lines. And we put them right here on the very tips and in the center. So those are going to be our connection colors. Now, of course, if you do a pattern, you're going to need a lot of different other beads, but basic, okay? We're talking basics today, so let's get started. So, this is the little star that I'm going to show you how to make today. You will see that the star is three-dimensional. 
All right, so we have sides, we have front, we have back, the whole nine yards. Now, I'm going to be showing you a little baby version like this one, again, because these are not my passion. You can make them as big or as small as you want, and I will talk more about that in the video. Now, I'm going to be using so that I don't have to fill this with anything, and it is super stiff. I'm actually gonna be using Diane Fitzgerald's method of her thread method. So I'm using the Dragon Thread today, the .006 in the white. And what I've done is I've got a yard and a half of thread. And I've threaded the needle, I put it in the center, and I'm gonna take the two ends of my thread together and then I'm going to tie these two threads together. Now I'm gonna put, go through it about twice, pull it nice and tight, and then I'm gonna be using my Wildfire cord cutter, and I'm just gonna cut the cords and kinda of melt that down a little bit so that I have just a little clump of knot. Get rid of my two little threads, and then I'm gonna take the thread the way it is, and I'm gonna hold it together, and I'm just gonna pull this thread, just like I've got it, so that I can get that needle exactly in the center. Now, if you want, you can use a wax of your choice. I'm gonna use a Thread Magic today, and all this is gonna do is, even though my thread is already waxed, this is going to help to keep the two threads together a little bit better. So you don't have to do this. I did not do it on any of these here that I made. I didn't do it on that one, but um, that is how she does it. So we will wax our thread. So it is good to go. So today for my main color, I'm gonna be using DB2516 for, or for that's gonna be for my little arms in the purple. For this matte color here, this matte lavender, I'm gonna be using DB035. That's the galvanized silver. And then for my connection, so that you can see it really well in the middle of that silver, I'm gonna be using, uh, and it's kind of hard to see on my little thing. There we go, it's 001, 001. So that's what I'm gonna be using today to start. So to start, we are going to be using this color here that's on the outer edge and here in the centers. So it's gonna be kind of odd because we start our little star here, and then we will work out from there. So you actually are starting here on the inner parts of the star. So I'm gonna pick up four of my blue here, and I'm gonna bring this down, and I'm going to take my needle and kind of separate the thread here at the knot. Now, if you want to, you can come closer but just separate that thread at the knot, go in between those threads and pull. So it gives you a little glob of beads, we're gonna say. Now I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna go through my very next bead just so that it's coming out of a bead instead of right there at the thread. I don't have to go through these beads again to reinforce because this is a double thread, so it is good to go. I don't have to do any sort of reinforce. So at this point, I'm gonna pick up two size 11s in that this little color that I'm using here. And my thread is coming out of a bead here on the left. So once I've got my two beads, I'm gonna come through the very next bead on the right. So I'm not skipping anything, I'm just coming through the very next bead. This is gonna start a little bit of a herringbone so that it looks like this. Now I'm just gonna simply turn my piece a little bit here. I'm gonna pick up two of the same color again. My thread is coming out again here on the left. So I'm gonna take my needle and I'm gonna come through that very next bead. So that now I have two little herring bones. I'm just gonna turn it just a little bit. Pick up two, come through the very next bead, right next to where my thread's coming out so that the two new beads sit on top of the two center beads. And then my last little one here, 
I'm gonna pick up two beads. But now this time, I'm gonna kind of flip it here so you can see it a little bit better. This time, when I go through my very next bead, you'll notice I already have a bead above it. So we have to finish the row by going through this bead. And then we need to do a step up through this bead here. So I come through one and two. So when I pick up the last two, I'm going through two instead of just the one like I would normally do. Again, this finishes out my row and it does the step up. So I'm gonna go ahead, I'm gonna make these beads. If they don't sit exactly like they're supposed to, I'm gonna wiggle with that thread and make them sit just like they're supposed to. So right now, you look like you have got a little bit of a blob again but it's gonna turn into something fabulous. I can guarantee you that. So we're gonna use the same color again. I'm going to pick up two. And just like I did in the previous row, I'm gonna come through the very next bead. Now I'm not gonna go through the bead below it. I'm just gonna go through this top bead here. And pull the thread. Now you'll notice that I have a little space right here between these beads. This is where we're gonna start putting that filler bead in, our other color. So I'm gonna pick up that other color. I'm going to skip my little space and then I'm gonna come through this next bead here of the set of two. So I skip the space and come through the very next bead. And when you pull it and you pop it in place, you have a new color there. I pick up two, and I come through the very next bead, which is gonna be the one right next to where my thread's coming out. Again, if they don't sit right, just kind of flick them with your nail there and make them sit like you want them to. Whoops. So now I have a space here again. So I have to pick up my filler color, skip the little space and come through the next bead. So when you pull it and pop it, you've got your new color. Two beads. I'm gonna come through the very next bead Pull it and make sure they lay how they're supposed to. And then as you guessed it, I'm gonna pick up the little filler bead here and I'm gonna skip this space and come through the next bead. And you'll feel it pop into place. Two of my A's go through the very next A here. And then I'm gonna pick up my B or my filler color and skip the space. And now again, let me flip it so you can see it a little bit easier here. You'll notice that this time I don't just have one bead to go through like I did on the other three corners. I have two. So I skip my little space here and then I'm gonna go through the last bead of the row and then the bead right above it. This is the bead that I put on, first bead I put on in the row. So this is where I finish the row and I do that step up. So I go through those two beads there. And sometimes you really have to pop it to get it into place because at this point, right now it's still flat, but when we go around the next row, it should start to make the fold that we need it to make. So we pick up two A's and we go through the very next A, which is gonna be this bead here. We're here, so we pick up a B and we go through the B that's already in place. We're just a working peyote, that's all we're doing. 
And now we pick up a B and we go through the next A, which is gonna be this bead here. Pull it again, you'll pop it and you'll feel it kind of pop into place there. Two A's and go through the next A. Then we've got a B. Go through the B and a B and I go through the next A, which is gonna be this first one of the two here in the corner. You guessed it, two A's and go through. And then a B, go through the B. And then a B and go through. And again, it'll pop into place. Two A's and go through an A. A B, go through the B. And then a B. And we're here to the corner again that we do that step up in. And the way that I kind of know that is if I look, I have my two, my two, my two. And then here I just have the one and I need to put in that second B. So I have to skip the little space right here and finish out the row. So if I finish the row, it's gonna be this bead here. But I need to go through both of these beads. So I go through one, well, it's a little easier said than done sometimes. Here we go. Gotta get in it at an angle. So you can see there, the two beads that I went through are the top two beads there. And now I pull this through. Now I can fold it and at this point, if I fold it, those beads will pop in so much easier. And now you see that I have this fun start to my star. So the great thing is, at this point, we can make this thing as big or as small we want, depending upon how many rows that we add. So we can just keep going where we pick up two beads, go through the very next bead there. And then when I get to where my silvers are, I just know to work across the the row and just pop in my silvers. So last row, I put in two silvers. So this row, I will be putting in three silvers. And it's just now, instead of it being flat, I'm working with it in this triangle um, type form. So we pick up two A's and go through the very next A. And then I work the row, putting in my B's. So B, B, and B. So I'm here to my, my little corner here. So I pick up two of my A's. And I go through, and then I'm gonna work my B's. You have to find the way that you feel most comfortable to hold these stars, because you really can move them all different directions as you work with them. 
Um, you just want to be careful, especially if you're following a pattern, make sure that you're not going to do anything to kind of mess your pattern up. So again, I'm here. So I'm just gonna pick up my two A's and go through. And then pick up my B's. And so when I get here to add the last B of my row, I'll notice I've got my little space and normally where I would just go through the one bead, I have two beads here. So I have to skip the space and then I go through two beads. This does my step up. Sometimes you'll get through both of the beads at same, the same time and sometimes you just have to go through them one at a time. Just make sure, just see like I got my thread caught here, just make sure that you be careful and you don't get that thread caught. So at this point, if I tried to flatten it back out, it will not flatten out. It'll be a bigger, you know, like wonky warped square is what they call it. So if you are having an issue figuring out when to do your step up, the easiest thing to do is to kind of go ahead and lay out your beads. So on this row, I know that I did three of my my B's. So on the next row, I'll do four. So if you want to, you can actually go ahead and lay them out here on your mat. So I know that I'm gonna have four sets of four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. My goodness gracious. Look at me making a mess. And then one, two, three, four. So I know that I will have four sets of four. So on that fourth set will be when I need to do my step up. So if you have an issue of trying to figure out where that step up is, if you'll lay your beads out like this, it'll be a little bit easier for you to know when you're doing that step up. So I'm gonna work this row fairly quickly here. And then I'll just start here and just start picking up the bees and popping them into place. Okay, and see now I can just turn it so it's easier for me to maneuver and pick up my two A's. And then I come to my next set of my B's here and I'll just pick those up and work. And then my A's. So you can see what I've got here so far. And then I've got, I still have two sets, so I know I'm not there yet to do that step up. So I'm gonna work the row. And then I'll do my A's. And then I know that this is my last set of four. So I know once I go to put that fourth bead on there, that that's where I'm gonna need to do my step up. So like I said, if you're having an issue figuring out step ups, this is a wonderful, wonderful way to keep up with the step up. So I'll see here, I've got this space and I skip this space and this is where I go through two beads instead of the one. So I go through the two, so that when I pull this and pop it into place, you'll see there how it pops into place. Now again, 
I can make this as big or as small as I want by continuing to add the beads. I'm gonna add one more row so that I have five of my beads on each side. So I finished the final round or doing as many as I wanted to. And you'll notice here that I have one, two, three, four, five of my B beads on each side. And I've done this step up. So now on this very first warp, what they call the warp square that we make, we are going to go around the whole thing and we are gonna put our connector beads, which is gonna be this zero, zero, one that I was telling you about. We are only going to do this on the first unit that we do. So, here in the corner, instead of picking up two, we are going to pick up one, I'm going to call this C. So, one C. And I go through the very next A so that it puts me a point there. Now, I'm going to work down this whole row just like I did with the C, the A, ugh, the B's, sorry. And I'm gonna put on these connector beads, which are uh, Diane calls the C beads in her pattern. So I just go through and I pick up a C and go through the B. You can see here, I'm gonna do this all the way around the piece, just like I was working another row. It's just in the corners, we're putting in one C instead of two A's. So once again, once I get here to the next little corner of the worked square, I pick up one C instead of doing the two A's. So the C and go through the A. And again, I'm to a corner. So instead of picking up those two A's, I pick up one C and I go through and I'm gonna continue to work around putting those connector beads in. So you can see now I've gone all the way around with my connector beads here or my C beads. And once I've got all the way around and I've done a little step up here, I can now get rid of this thread. So all I'm gonna do is just kind of stitch through some of my little spine. I'm gonna call this my spine here. I'm gonna come through some of my little spine beads. And then I will just get rid of the thread. The great thing about this project, especially when you use the double thread, like Diane calls for, is that this little bad boy is not gonna come apart. So, that is the wonderful thing about it. So I just stitched straight up through, and then I'm gonna take that wildfire cord cutter and get rid of that thread so that now I have a completed warped square. So now I'm gonna make another square exactly like this one again with the double thread the only difference is i am not going to do all of these connector beads so let me get that one done and then i'm going to show you how we are going to make units two three and four for our little star so now i've got one completed warp square so this was my first one and then i have my second one and you'll notice that I have stopped on the row here where I have my five beads, so I did not add the connector beads. So in the corner that I'm coming out of, I'm going to pick up one B, or I'm sorry, one C. This is my little connector. And I'm gonna go through the next A. Now I'm gonna put these side by side. And just like if we were to zip up a peyote tube, we're going to do the star the same way. So I'm going to separate it a little bit here. So my thread is coming out of the A bead here. 
So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my needle and if I put these together, the next bead that would connect them is the C connector bead. So it's this first one right here. Now I'm gonna leave this not pulled together yet so that you can see what I'm doing. So the next bead is gonna be this silver one sticking up here. So this B here on this left component. And again, I'm not gonna pull it tightly yet so you can see kind of how it's going together. The next bead I'm gonna go through is the connector bead here on this first component. So you can see what's happening here and how the thread is going together. So then the next one is gonna be this one. All I'm doing is I'm zigzagging back and forth. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna pull this tight so that you can see how they locked together. You cannot tell that here that I did not stitch these uh, as one unit. So that's what we want. The next bead I'm gonna go through is gonna be the connector here. Then it's gonna be the B. Just zigzagging back and forth. The biggest thing is be careful not to get your thread caught. The next one I'm gonna do is gonna be that connector. Then a B. And you might have to wiggle around there to kind of get it in. There we go. And then the next bead's gonna be this connector. Then the B. Then the connector. And now the next one sticking up is gonna be this first A here of my set of two at the top. So when we pull that, you can see now that one part of the star is completely connected together. So now I'm gonna look at the top here and I'm still gonna do that zigzag motion. So I'm gonna go through the single C connector bead and then I'm gonna go through the A so that when I pull that nice and tight, now that will lock together. So I'm gonna flip it around just so that I can see it a little bit better. But now what we've gotta do is we've gotta zip up this side as well. So I'm coming out of the A, so I'm gonna to come to the connector bead and that's gonna be the next one that I go through. Okay, flip it around here. The next one is gonna be the B. It's just the beads that are sticking up as we work our way across. So now it's the connector. And then the B. Then the connector. And the B. Connector. And the B. Connector. You see I went through two connectors there, so you just have to be careful because your beads are almost in a straight line and it's a little bit harder now to kind of get everything connected. So the B. And then the connector. And the A. 
Now I'm in the center of the star here, and you can see that the center of our star has one, two, three, four, five of my connector beads. So when we get here to the center, unlike the top where we connect the one connector bead there, we are going to add one connector and come through the next bead here. So that way, once we get it all pulled together, then we can go through all of those little connector beads and really pull the center of our star together. So now what I'm gonna do is I've got it connected, but I'm gonna come around this edge here and I'm gonna add connector beads. This is the way that Diane does it. So that's the way we're gonna do it for the video today. So I'm just gonna work around the edge here of just picking up a connector and going through all the way around. Now, it looks like I made a little bit of a hot mess mistake here, so we're gonna pull that out. There we go. And then when I get here to the point, I'm gonna put on one connector. So one and go through. And I'm gonna continue till I get to here just putting these connectors on. And once I get back to the start here, and I know it's the start because I already have a connector bead here in place, I'm just going to stitch through the beads and get rid of this working thread that I have now. So I'm gonna try to get it to go up through my little spine here. You can do it however you want. This is just how I choose to do it. And if you can't get through a bead, don't force it at that point. So then I'll just take my little cord cutter or your scissors or whatever you've got or whatever you want to use and I'll get rid of that thread. So that now I have two of my components completely connected. So I have my first one and my second one and they are just like that. So now I'm going to make a third and a fourth unit and connect them exactly like we have here. So we'll have one, two, three, four, and then I'm gonna show you how to do that fifth one. Once you get the four pieces of the star, so one, two, three, and four, once you get those together, then you are ready to finish out your fifth component and actually do the connection here. Now you'll notice on this final component, I have my five B beads along each of the edges and I have not added any connector beads and this is where we will actually start the connection. You'll notice I have connector beads on the fourth one that I've done and on the first one. So I have connector beads already in place. So that means I get to play just zip up. So from where I'm coming out here, it's actually a top corner, which is fine, no worries. My thread is coming out here on the left. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my needle. And you can see I'm just kind of setting it in place here and I'm gonna hold it. And I'm gonna come through the connector bead here at the top. And then I'll come through the A on this fifth component. That way it will connect 
the beads here in this top corner. So those beads are now connected. Now I'll work as normal and I will zip up all the way down until I come out of this bead here. So I'm just gonna do my normal zip up back and forth until I get to this point. Okay, so you can see that I have that zipped up and now I'm exiting here in the center. So on this fifth component that I've got, I'm gonna pick up my one connector bead and I'm gonna come up through the A right next to where my thread's coming out. So it puts that fifth and final connector bead here in the center of the star. So now I'm gonna work as normal and I'm gonna come up and zip and then I'm gonna come down this side and zip just like I normally would. So as you can see, I have this side completed. I came up, I zip this side and come down so that now I am still got one little section here to zip up. So just like on the other side, when I come out of this A here in the center, I'm going to pick up my little connector bead, my C bead is what Diane calls it, and I'm going to go up through the very next A. So that now that will put me five beads in that inner circle that I have. And then I'm going to zip the piece up so that this will finish out the actual zip up of all of my parts. Okay, so as you can see now, both sides of my star are complete. The only thing that we have left to do is if you finish out the very last step, which is to stitch through your beads to come out on each side and go through these five beads here in the center. What this is going to do is this is just going to pull those beads together and it's going to make it look a little bit more finished and better. At this point, again, the world is your oyster. You can do whatever you want. You can come off of here and add a little dangle, um, you know, add a, a hanger, whatever you want to do. You can make these as big as you want or like micro little stars like I did. It's completely up to you and what you do with them. I hope you enjoyed learning how to make this three-dimensional peyote star. Again, I followed the instructions step-by-step -step in Diane Fitzgerald's book, Shaped Beadwork and Beyond. Now, this book is no longer in print. It came out in 2013, and I did look online, and I found several used copies of the book. Now, they can be pretty expensive for this specific one. I hunted and hunted and could not find a digital version of the pattern for the star that I found in this book by Diane, but I found several other really, really great links to some that I'm going to put down in the description box below. Katie Dean at My World of Beads has a really, really great one on how to make a star. It's actually like a workshop. And again, my buddy Franklin at FAMEJewelryDesigns.com, he does Zoom classes and it teaches you far beyond the basic star itself. I also found from the Tales of Beads on Etsy, I found graph paper that you can design your own piece. Again, Jean Powers at jeanpower.com has an amazing pattern as well that you can download. Uh, Deb Moffat Hall has some really great patterns and she's actually doing, I believe it's a sweater, like an ugly sweater type thing, um, star each month and they're super cute. And even Stephanie from Bronze Pony Beads, she did a video a couple of months ago. Now her video is a little bit different from mine. So we're gonna link everything down below so that way you can check those resources out. I'm not gonna write a pattern for this just because there are so many fantastic resources for these stars already available. But I hope you enjoyed this video and make sure to come back next Monday where we are going to be talking with the inventor of the Jewel Loom and I am looking super forward to talking to Juliana. Um, I did want to let you know that although I don't have a pattern today for the next three days, so February 7th, 2022 through February 9th of 2022, all delicas on our website are going to be 20% off. 
you do have to use the coupon code DELICA to get back 20% off of DELICA beads, size 11s and 8s, uh, from February 7th, 2022 through February 9th, 2022. So guys, thanks again so much for watching, and we'll see you again next time. Bye-bye. Mm -hmm.